And as always, we welcome those of you who join us on live stream as well. <clears throat> it's good and pleasant for brethren to dwell together in unity, even if there's a distance yeah, <laughs> between us. We're continuing in the uh, letter of Jude. This will be our ninth exposition of this letter. Now the church is, uh, is given many warnings about false teachers and false apostles. Those of you familiar with scripture know this very well. In our time, there are many speaking to the world about like the Antichrist and false Christs. And there is such a thing as the Antichrist and false Christ and many Antichrists. But that is not a message for the world. The world is already in the grip of Satan. It's the church that's warned about the presence of these. There are some people who are, who are delivering these warnings. We're grateful for them. But there are a great number that do not deliver them, some, some out of fear and some because they're af afraid how it will impact on their career. But something must be said about these men because God has said something about them. If God hasn't said and said anything, all right, we'd, we could perhaps negotiate whether something should be said or how much, but God has spoken about them. He has said that these are men that draw away disciples after themselves. This is Acts 20, verse 30. Paul said they caused divisions they caused them, and offenses, they caused them. That's Romans 16, 17. They corrupt the word of God, as 2 Corinthians 2, 17. They deceitfully transform themselves into the apostles of Christ. That's 2 Corinthians eleven thirteen. Paul called them unruly and vain talkers. Paul further said they're enemies of the cross of Christ whose end is destruction. I said whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, who glory in their shame, and who mind earthly things. Peter said they bring in damnable heresies. They bring in teachings that cause people to be damned. That's, that's strong, that's strong stuff, but we got to hear that. This is the truth now. There are people that teach things that cause people to be damned. That's why we're concerned about what we hear. The thing that makes these, uh, see, these false teachers were, had crept into this, this mm -hmm. these people Jews right into, they'd come in. Mm -hmm. And the people didn't even know it. Yeah. That's what we just, what I just mentioned to you, what caliber people these were and what they did. These, these were Christian people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They didn't even know it. Yeah. Because they couldn't, as Peter would say, see afar. They were, they were nearsighted. Yeah, amen. They couldn't see beyond their own private circumstances in life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They couldn't. They lived in a little world mm -hmm. all by themselves, and it was a very little world, yeah. I might add. They were spiritually unstable. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 4, 14 tells us that the design for all the various gifts that communicate the truth of God to the church, the design is that they might no longer be children tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. See, people that are immature can't figure these doctrines out. 
They confuse them, and they're tossed. If they, if they sound good, they think they are good. That's because they're infantile. See, they must not remain this way, though. There's no provision in Christ for perpetual infancy. So if a person is perpetually infantile, juvenile, a babe in their understanding, they are outside the circumference of God's will. They are on their own. God will protect you until the time you should grow up. Thank God we'd all been taken down. Some of these false prophets were subtle enough to teach Christ's own servants to commit fornication and eat things sacrificed to idols. That was in uh, Thyatira, church in Thyatira, Revelation 2.20. Oh, they didn't teach, they taught Christ's servants. That's what Jesus said. Mm -hmm. These are the words of Jesus. Yeah. Taught my servants, yeah. my servants, mm -hmm. to commit fornication, eat things, sacrifice to idols. How'd they do that? Mm -hmm. The servants weren't grown up, mm -hmm. and the teachers were subtle. Yeah. Men must not remain in a juvenile state. In spite of this, it ought to be this ought to be evident, evident, but it isn't evident. This is this is the irony of the situation that most Christians really don't believe this. Some of them don't even know this. A terrible situation. It exists all around us. There's a gospel being preached that's popular, that's being gulped down, that leaves people babies for an extended period of time. Yeah. It doesn't even tell the people they ought to grow up. It makes it easy because we've got all the problem solvers are in the, on the church staff. Yeah. 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 See, we've got immediate help for everybody you don't have to work out your own salvation of fear and trembling. Somebody else will work it out for you. We've got special books and special workshops and special things, so you don't have to address salvation yourself. But listen to me. If you don't address salvation yourself, it will not be addressed. You've got to work out your salvation of fear and trembling. That's what salvation is calculated to be developed in that context. Why? Because if you work out your salvation, you've got to do it in communication with God and yeah. fellowship with Christ, right. the Holy Spirit. See, you've got that's the context it's worked out in. So yeah. it's not that you work real hard by yourself. I mean, it, yeah. that isn't it. Some people don't have the slightest inkling that this state of perpetual infancy is there. They don't even know it's there. They're sitting right in the middle of it. I can't tell you. I remember. I can remember over a period of at least 60 years. I can remember over a period of 60 years, various meetings that I attended. Some on a, were regularly scheduled meetings. Some were men's meetings. Some were conferences, all kind of meetings. And I remember the caliber of people. Some of these, uh, some of these meetings we'd eat together afterward. And I remember. Oh, I remember very well what the people talked about, Amen. what they did. They were not godly people. They were not spiritual people. They were babies at the best. It isn't that if you talked about the Bible, they told you to be quiet. It wasn't that. It's just that they weren't interested. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some people would actually physically move mm -hmm. to another table. Yeah. Now, why do I say that? Because if you cannot pick up on a person's teaching, mine or anybody else's, and you can't tell whether it's solid or not, mm -hmm. you've got to look at what it produces. Amen. Yeah. That's what Jesus said to do. Amen. He said, beware of false prophets that come to you in sheep's wool, she, wolves in sheep's clothing. 
But he said, he said, but but by their fruits you can tell what they are by what they produce. What they produce tells you what they are. Mm -hmm. All right, we've got a a message that's being preached that more people leave the church than come into the church. Yeah. Now, I'm telling you the truth now. I remember I used to log when I was uh, the must to be envied coordinator of church development. And I remember how a church would report, a big church would report maybe over, over a year period of time, 800 conversions. Before they had the conversions, they had 1,000 people attending. Then they had 1,000 people, 800 conversions. Now, you figure it'd be 1,800, right? No, sometimes it'd be 700. Rarely was it over what it was before. Very, very rarely was it over what it was before. And if it was uh, a mega church, the explosion of attendance was not the result of preaching. Even though they talked a lot about evangelism, their, their church didn't grow because of preaching. It grew because of campaigns and contests and methodologies. Yeah. Yeah. All right, something produced that idea. Yeah. Right. That, this, that this was even acceptable. Mm -hmm. Something that was preached produced that idea. Mm -hmm. Now, I understand that There are some people who have who have set under bad teaching, but they've grown anyway. But the reason they did is because somebody else was feeding them. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh -huh. That's why they grew. Mm -hmm. They didn't grow a little bit because they didn't get a little bit of good from a bad message. Somebody else, either they were reading or something like this, but somebody else. Yeah was feeding them. We strongly recommend that people attend where they're fed. Amen. Yeah. We can't make that happen, but we've, we know this by experience now. This is something we know by experience, that you want a fellowship where you get your food, yeah. spiritual food. Because the gospel is the power of God and salvation, the, the power yeah. of God and salvation, mm -hmm. it cannot possibly produce a people who are in a backward posture yeah. or a static position it it's God's power to salvation it does the gospel does not produce this kind of people so whatever does whatever message does is not gospel and that's how you know the person's a false prophet Amen. understanding this enables Jude to write as he does with this very very strong tone because things were already like out of hand. We're going to be looking at verse, uh, verse 11 tonight. Woe unto them! For they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward and perished in the gainsaying of Korah. <laughs> You'd think somebody like that couldn't be hidden. But they were. That's why, that's why Jude had to say something about them. Woe unto them! Some of the other versions kind of accent, they, they, all the translators sense the strength of this word, a curse on them. They are damned. Alas for them, the Jerusalem Bible says, what sorrow awaits them, the living translation says, how terrible it will be for them. International English, now they're in for real trouble. Contemporary English, it'll be bad for them. English Revised Version, how horrible it'll be for them, God's Word. I'm fed up with them, the Message Bible. See, every, everybody who worked with this saying knew this. <laughs> yeah. this you got to take this woe as them. you got to take this seriously. This is like a closed door situation. Yeah. He didn't say woe can be them. Uh, he, yeah. Yeah. he said woe unto them. Yeah. This is an announcement. This is an announcement. Yeah. It's not a statement of a possibility, uh -huh. something that might happen. Oh, it's an announcement ahead of time. 
The teachers of whom Jude is writing had come to an irretrievable state. I, I find no pleasure in thinking about anybody being in an irretrievable state, but the fact of the matter is such people do exist. We're talking now about teachers Deceivers as compared to the, the, the deceived. I, right. I've emphasized this before. I want to emphasize this again. Uh -huh. This is not talking about people who just because they're unlearned mm -hmm. say the wrong thing. That's, that's not what we're talking about here. Yeah. Yeah. We're talking about people who concoct the doctrines and yeah. teach them as though God gave yeah. them. Amen. Right. Now, there's not, there's not a a, there's an abundance of these people o over a period of time. There's abundance of these kind of people. But at any given time, there's not an abundance. Most of the false teachers are mimicking who taught them. Yes, that's right. That's right. And they're, they, technically speaking, are not in this category. Yeah, you know, some people may say, well, you can overdo this, but I don't believe you can oh, no. overemphasize how serious this oh, is. Oh, no. You, the language yeah. should have convinced a person of this. We're talking here about people that have produced, they've been building on the house of God. They've been intruders, are they intruders? And they've been building on the house of God. And they've been putting wood, hay, and stubble in the structure. As compared to gold and silver and precious stones. First Corinthians 3 tells you about this. That the church of God is, the church is God's temple. This is where God resides. Paul said, I'm a master builder now. He knew, he knew how to build. you got to build on the foundation, yes, which is man. Jesus Christ. He knew how to build. He knew some people didn't. He said, now, if any man defiles the temple of God, that's what this wood, hay, stubble, people that really aren't born again, if any man, he doesn't say if any, it's anybody, anybody, if anybody puts on in this temple people who are consumable. Wood, hay, stubble. He said, 1 Corinthians 3.17, God will destroy that man. Now don't think for one minute that this is just an idle word. It is not. That's why Paul said this so firmly. That's why Jude, woe is unto them is equivalent to God will destroy them. Amen. It's equivalent to that. They corrupted the house of God. See, people have learned to live with the corrupt church. Everybody knows this. We all were in churches like this, where most of the people were like out of the picture. We all knew it was. But every other church was the same way that we knew about, unless it was just a very small group. So the church has learned to live with wood, hay, stubble. It's just learned, it's become accustomed to it. Why? Because the message preached has led them to that conclusion. They've been led to that conclusion by what they've been hearing or reading or whatever they've been exposed to. But God's serious about this. There are people who have infiltrated believers who, as Philippians 3.19 says, whose end is destruction. It's so already now. God announced it ahead of time. He announced it ahead of time. Their end, destruction. They're like the field. Hebrews 6, 8 says they're like the field which bears thorns and briars and is rejected and is nigh unto cursing whose end, whose end is to be burned. See, that's people like that. Now, I admit that this is too much for some people to handle. I mean, I understand this. But that's not my problem, that's their problem. Mm -hmm. Nobody should find it difficult to receive any word God has said. Amen. Amen. That's a bad sign right there. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. That a person would believe that he was at liberty mm -hmm. to not, re not believe what God said or to reject what God said or to doubt what God said or not to rely on what God said. That is a bad situation to be in. Yeah. Ask Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ask them. Yeah. You'll have a chance, I imagine, at the judgment. Yeah, right. Now their fruits testify. Jesus said their fruits. He said, "Be Jesus." These are the words of Jesus. 
Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them, not by their appearance. Mm -hmm. Ye shall know, because they come like wolves. There's nothing about their appearance that tells you this. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? You want some grapes? <laughs> Do you go to a thorn tree to get grapes? Do you? No. He said, oh, great thorn trees don't grow grapes and false prophets don't grow truth. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know them by their fruits. What do people believe? What are they persuaded of? What dictates how they live? That tells you what they've heard. Amen. And what they've heard tells you something about the person who preached it. This assumes that they accepted what was, what was preached, you understand. Let's hear some words about what God, who can't change, mm -hmm. God can't change. God's spoken some words about false prophets, just so we know the gravity of the situation. Here's what he said through uh, Isaiah. Therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets that prophesy in my name, mm -hmm. and I sent them not, yet they say sword and famine shall not be in the land. By sword and famine shall those prophets be consumed. So what they're telling God's people won't happen, will happen to them. Yeah. You'll not perish. Huh? Once you're saved, you're not, you're not perish. It's impossible. You're like, they'll perish. The ones that yeah, taught that, yeah. they'll perish. Mm -hmm. Here's to Jer who's here's to Jeremiah. Therefore, behold, I'm against the pro I'm against the prophets. Right, wait, let, me, let me check to see if this, I'm reading this right. Therefore I'm against the prophets that steal my words, every one from his neighbor. They, they steal my words from the people. Behold, I'm against the prophets, saith the Lord, a second time, that use their tongues and say, he saith. Behold, I'm against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and to tell them and cause my people to err by their lies and by their lightness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them, therefore they shall not profit. They shall not profit this people at all, Amen. saith the Lord. Hmm. Now that... Uh, Nobody's going to gather grapes of thorns. Mm -hmm. yep. No one's going to be profited in any way, as God counts profit, mm -hmm. by teaching that's not true. Yeah. Amen. To Ezekiel, God said, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy, and say unto them that prophesy out of their own hearts, mm -hmm. Hear ye the word of the Lord, thus saith the Lord, Woe to the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. Amen. Hmm? And so that's what we say about false teachers, false prophets. They haven't really seen anything, even though they've seen the Lord said and so forth. Woe to them. Now, the day of salvation, let's be clear about this. The day of salvation did not change the stance of God against false prophets. Yeah. Jesus didn't die so God could tolerate false prophets. Yeah. Yeah. Woe to them. It's an announcement of the destiny of these prophets. That's why you want to be cautious not to assign false prophet without thinking about this. You might condemn a polis. You, know. yeah, uh -huh. you got to be cautious about that. Yes. You can always count on these false prophets being popular, too. Mm -hmm. That's right. Jesus said, Beware when all men speak well of you. Yeah. That's how they talk about the false prophets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they seek that, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Now, this is the day of mega churches. We didn't used to have a day like this. Yeah. Huh? Mm -hmm. Something's happened in this day that they are speaking well. Huh? The people are speaking well. The people that really don't have much to say. Some of the biggest churches in the world. The people that televised and impact the whole world. Yeah. And you listen to them and you say, What, what is this? Yeah. 
Sounds like how to win friends and influence people. That's right. Woe to them. Now, if you can't decipher the message itself, then you've got to look at what it produces. What kind of people are in the wake of these waves of delusion? Some people are officials in the church. That here is this kind of this kind of thing. How acceptably do these people live? Why do they have to have so many counselors? Why are there single single births, mothers having children? Why? Why is there fornication? Why is there adultery? Why? Why is drug usage in the church? Why? It's because of what they've been told. Yeah. It's because of the gospel that they've embraced. That's why. Is the grace of God teaching men or not to reject or deny ungodliness and worldly lusts? Does the grace of God teach people or not to... to to be godly and righteous in, a, in, a, in the present world? Mm -hmm. Does the grace of God do that or not? And if that's not done, mm -hmm. then where is the grace of God? Huh? Yeah. Who dares to speak about the grace of God if what God's grace does is in present? Yeah. Amen. And we've got a kind of a false view of, yeah. of grace. It ought to be noted that God does give people with an erroneous message even when it's borrowed, space to repent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to throw this in. But yeah. So we know that this is not as innocent as it seems. That mm -hmm. false prophetess in Thyatira, mm -hmm. he called her Jezebel. Because Jezebel was among the people of God trying to kill the prophets of God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he says, I gave her space. Jesus said this. I gave her space to repent. I gave her a period of time. Yeah. She could see the error of her way, turn from it, repent. I gave her space to repent. Yeah. She didn't. Mm -hmm. So false prophets, I don't know how, I can't identify this space to repent, but everyone who's preaching a wrong message has an allotted period of time to abandon that thing. Yeah. Amen. And if they don't, woe, then we get this woe yeah. under them. The, in fact, we don't have any examples, so far as I know, of someone that abandoned an erroneous gospel. Maybe there is, but we, it's, it's strange that God didn't say, and so-and-so preached an erroneous gospel. You might say, what about, what about those that excluded the Gentiles? Well, they didn't preach the death of Christ wrong. They preached the entrance into Christ wrong. And once they, once they had it expounded, they, mm -hmm. they stopped. That's right. Immediately. Woe is under them. So as I say, the fact that we don't have an example of someone that was preaching a bad, a fundamentally unsound message. What about Apollos? He wasn't preaching a fundamentally unsound message. He was learned in the scriptures and knew the way of God. That's what the scripture says. But he didn't know all about entering into Christ. And it just took one encounter with someone that knew, and he they, that took Amen. care of that. Amen. No one can dictate what such people are to do. There's not a, like a recovery routine for people like that. Yes. It proves that we don't. God is not a tyrant. He's not looking for an opportunity no. to condemn people. That's right. he, he's, gone, he's gone out of his way to give them an opportunity to repent. That's right. Which means he had to give them wisdom, some kind of wisdom, yeah. to, for them to be able to identify they were wrong. But they chose the air yeah. over what was right. Some kind of door was opened to yes. them so that they could have gone through it. To trample on the gospel and reject the declaration and focus in, of God in favor of their own focus, this accounts for the sternness of Jude's words. This is why he speaks, because this, this is what someone who insists on adopting another message, another core, talk about a core message. 
those who adopt another core message, like you can do it if you just try. You can have a lot of health and wealth and just apply yourself. Someone who adopts a core message like this, they're flirting with damnation. Yes, amen. There's a line, there's a moral and spiritual line that once you cross it, you're in territory that you cannot exit from. Mm -hmm. Where this is, I don't know, I don't want to know. I just don't want to cross it. So you've got to stick with the truth and love with the truth. That's why, that's why God gives people a love with the truth. If you love the truth, if you've received the love of the truth, as 2 Thessalonians 2 tells you, if you've received the love of the truth, then what's not true grates against your Amen. soul. It, clash, it clashes with your spirit. And maybe at first you can't identify exactly where the clash is, but you kind of sense that something's wrong here. And you must pursue that. The human intellect is not capable of deciphering this. Mm -hmm. As brilliant as man may be, there's no natural aptitude that can define what we need to be defined here. False teachers. Only faith and an undefiled mind and conscience yeah. are suited for this work. Mm -hmm. That's why if the message doesn't come, then faith's not produced, then there's no way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, that leaves people with no way to decipher what's true and what's what's not true. Mm -hmm. Then he elaborates on these people. Woe to them that he announces their destiny ahead of time. Uh, yeah. Woe to them. Mm -hmm. They've gone the way of Cain. They've gone. It was deliberate. Mm -hmm. not, not that some people were led away. These were gone away. See, there's a, there's a difference of being led away yes. and being gone away. There's a, there's a difference in the two. Yeah. Gone away. This is descriptive of a manner of life, a way in which life is addressed. Life is addressed without Christ in mind, mm -hmm. without the gospel in mind, without the world to come in mind. Mm -hmm without justification in mind, see? It's addressed. Life is approached from a different vantage point. Now, I, I see in some people, they're misdirected, they're living misdirected lives and they don't know it. They're headed in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. And it's quite a challenge to Try and wake up these people because there's a whole world, religious world, that's impacting, yes, that's right. impacting their thinking. Mm -hmm. So Jude spells it out a little more detail. He says they've gone the way of Cain. Cain. Mm -hmm. Now let me give you briefly the, everything we know about Cain. He's the eldest son of Adam and Eve and the first person born of a woman. Mm -hmm. He was a tiller of the soil. In a fit of jealousy roused by the rejection of himself and his sacrifice and the acceptance of his brother Abel and his sacrifice, he committed murder, yeah. for which he was expelled from the presence of the Lord, and he led a life in, in exile. He settled in the land of Nod. He built a city which he named after his son Enoch. His descendants are enumerated together with the inventions for which they were known and they were all quite remarkable. There are occasional references to Cain made in Hebrews 11, 4 and 1 John 3, 1 and 2 and Jude 1, 11. But there's nothing commendable said about Cain. That's right. He was, we're told, of the wicked one. What we know about him, he was a transgressor, he was a hater, and he was a murderer. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's what we know about Cain. Yeah. Among other things, this shows that the value of being familiar with the it shows us the value of being familiar with the book of Genesis. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Not only was Cain, he, he was wicked. In a general sense, he was wicked. But he was he was a religious person. That's right. That's right. Uh -huh. <laughs> Cain's like a type, a certain type. He represents oh, a yes. type of person. He murdered his brother over a religious that's right. issue. That's right. Mm -hmm. A sacrifice. That's so right. It, in fact, he was the first one to offer us that. Mm -hmm. we, well, first one of record, first man of record. As I mentioned, this shows the value of knowing the book of Genesis. Here's a man that lived before the law, 
that helps us to understand a contemporary circumstance. There are principles and examples established in the right of Moses that apply to all ages. This is, Cain is one of them. You can see how serious it is to suggest any part of this book is of minimal or no value. Amen. The way of Cain. There are a number of things that characterize the life of Cain. The way it's a way he lived, the way he was, the way of Cain. These teachers follow the way of Cain. That's the way they preferred. They didn't, like, Cain wasn't their idol. That's not what he's saying. He said that it's the way of Cain. They're, they're, Cain lived in a certain way that is actually perpetuated by the devil. Yeah, it's a manner of life that is the result of satanic influence. Huh? They followed that way of life. That's, and Cain is referred to as the wicked, a wicked one. So let's look at the way of Cain, just some casual observations. The way of Cain, he was basically self-centered. Cain himself was a center of his own attention. If he didn't receive commendation, that, that was the thing that upset him. Basically self-centered. If he had been properly focused, he would have repented and sought forgiveness, but he was self-centered. To the matter that Brother Jason mentioned, his religious posture was feigned, mm -hmm. yes. pretended. The first sacrifice of record that was offered by a man was that of Cain. Mm -hmm. The offering was pretentious and not from the heart, else the rejection of it would have caused Cain to fear and tremble. Mm -hmm. Because he, Brother Jason reminded us it, this was a religious sin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It wasn't because... Abel's crops, Abel's flocks were better than his crops. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, not, yeah, that's, right. that's not why. Mm -hmm. It's because Abel's sacrifice was accepted and, he, and his wasn't. Yeah. He was self-centered and his religion was fame. Yeah. And he, he denied what he knew. Mm -hmm. God asked him, where is your, where is your brother? Yeah. And he responded by saying, am I my brother's keeper? Well, he knew where his brother's carcass was he he killed him maybe i don't know if he buried him or left him out to rot in the open field but he knew he knew where abel was but he denied that he that he knew it and he refused to acknowledge sin he never said i've sinned and done this great iniquity i say that's what david did. said i've sinned not not Cain. That's the way of Cain. see the way of Cain. that's the way of Cain. people don't admit they sin that's the way of Cain. Particular teachers, and he was uh, he was dead toward God. Now one would think that being confronted with the God of Heaven would induce fear, but it did not. With Cain, he was dead toward God, incapable of responding properly. See, God spoke to him before he killed Abel and after he killed Abel. He just was dead. I mean, he knew God said something to him, but he he was he wasn't able to respond to it, dead toward God. That's the penalty of having a hard heart. Yeah. Yeah. You, God himself, God himself could talk to the person. He couldn't respond. So what about Saul of Tarsus? He didn't have a hard heart. That's right. He thought he was serving God. He was, he was, he was sensitive. First time Jesus appeared to him, he picked up on it right yeah, away. Right. Yeah. Cain had two appearances and he didn't pick up on it at all. And he was not repentant, yeah. even though faced with his sin, told that Abel's blood was calling out from the ground to God. He'd, he didn't repent. See, that's the way of Cain, yeah. way of Cain. Mm -hmm. We've had in recent years a number of well-known ministers that committed immorality. Mm. Some of them did repent, not many. Most of them had an excuse. Most of them denied it. The first time the charge was raised, they flat denied it. Then when in, incontrovertible evidence was presented, they had an alibi for it. But they didn't, they didn't uh, confess it, admit it. They were dead toward God, not repentant. And the way of Cain now. 
is hostile toward those accepted by God. Those who follow the way of Cain, they can't stand to be with people that are serving God. Even though the righteous man he killed was his own brother, mm -hmm. Cain's nature moved him to be hostile against Abel, a man whom God accepted. Jesus referred to Abel as righteous Abel. Yeah, amen. And he told the scribes and Pharisees they were guilty of shedding his blood. Uh -huh. Matthew 23, 5. In other words, they were of a generation. Cain has a generation. Some of his in the generation in the flesh are listed in Genesis. But there's a spiritual generation that traces back Amen. to Cain. Yeah. And the Pharisees, they were, they were in that generation. They also were, were hostile toward those accepted by God. And finally, he seeks to take the, seeks to take the life of the accepted one. The way of Cain seeks to take the life of the person God accepted. Mm -hmm. Now the laws of the land keep them from murdering the people, at least in our country. <laughs> There's some countries they don't keep them from it, but in this country they keep them. Mm -hmm. But they seek to take their lives by another way, by maligning them, yeah. bringing false charges against them, trying to destroy their reputation. What is all that? As trying to take their life. That's what that is. That's, that's how God's going to review it. There's people that misrepresented Paul. They said, oh, yeah, Paul, he's teaching people that we ought to do evil that good can abound. Be that way. They were trying to destroy him. Yeah. Just but Jason. Yeah, John said if you hate your brother, you're a murderer. You're a murderer. Like that's, that's right. right. You don't have to physically that's right. beat someone to death. Yeah. So they're attempting to rid themselves of the influence of the... Of the God, so that is just kind of a thumbnail sketch of the way yeah. of Cain, and these were not just some quote Christian unquote people; uh -huh. these were teachers that had infiltrated the church, yeah. the unawares. The people didn't know they were there, and they ran greedily mm -hmm. after the heir of Balaam for reward. Yeah. Run greedily. I was interested in what. Yeah, obvious is some kind of aggression is is translated rushed headlong, abandoned themselves, ran riotously, running uncontrolled, gave themselves over to a castaway, thrown themselves into it. Remind me of these uh, races they have in Mexico with the bulls. Mm -hmm. The bulls yeah. say they they run yeah. recklessly. Yeah, go ahead. grabbing everything they can. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's yes. just like mm. it, it isn't enough. It's never enough. Uh -huh. More and more and more and they're they're, mm. they're like aggressively gathering it mm. greedily. Amen. Mm. Yeah. The heir of Balaam. Peter says these false teachers which have forsaken the right way and gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bozer, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's just grasping. Mm -hmm. Yes. Something on what uh, Sister Speak June. Up. Something on what Sister June said. I also got the picture of running and not being able to get enough, but trying to fill yourself with the world is like trying to fill a black hole, and it's never going to happen. That's right. When you fill yourself. Fill yourself with Christ, the capacity will be full, and if you're faithful with what, with what you have, it'll be enlarged. Amen. Wages mm -hmm. of unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. Satan will pay you wages for being ungodly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Moses called them the wages of divination. Mm -hmm. You talk about Balaam, the wages of divination. Mm -hmm. Numbers 22 7. Both Moses and Nehemiah say Balaam was hired against Israel. The church at Pergamos had some people that held to the doctrine of Balaam. Mm -hmm. How about that? Yeah, he said, I have something against you. You got some people at your church that hold to the doctrine of Balaam. Yeah. They're like prophesying for wages. Mm. Yeah. They, think, they think preaching the gospel is a way to earn a living. Uh. It's a career. Yeah. Whatever. Balaam obtained wages he loved, and he obtained death as well. 
So these false teachers will declare what the people want to hear if they'll pay them enough. Yeah. If, you pay, if you pay me enough, I'll tell you what you want to hear. Yeah. I'll embellish it. I'll, mm -hmm. If you don't want to address your sin yourself, we'll, we'll, have, we'll, we'll set up a staff. We'll, we'll address it for you. had some insight. He already saw. In fact, he already said, the Lord is blessed. And, yes, I can't and, curse. And I cannot reverse it. Mm -hmm. and, but he kept, he kept trying to find a way until yes. finally mm -hmm. he couldn't curse Israel. But he was, he was so intent on that, that game that he thought mm -hmm. that he, he said, I can't curse them, but I'll, I'll teach you how to make them work God That's right. curse them. Yeah, he told the twenty fifth chapter, I believe it is, of Numbers, told how the, how this happened. He taught them to mingle. Mm -hmm. He knew that the the custom of the Israelites was when they defeated a nation, they took the women. And so he taught them to throw a feast, invite the because they had taken they had taken some women of Moab. Rings to invite the Israelites. The Israelites came, and that's how they they began to intermingle. They saw these beautiful women, and mm -hmm. they were snared. He was paid. Yeah, amen. He couldn't he couldn't curse them. He knew he couldn't curse them, but he divulged. He knew what it would take for them to be cursed, right, yeah. and it was not a curse from him. It was an action they would commit. Yeah. yeah. That tells you what the spirit of these teachers are. Mm -hmm. They know it's wrong. Yeah. They yes. know it's wrong. And they they are against God and they're against those that are sitting under their, their teachings. Mm -hmm. Amen. Way of Cain. The way of uh, Balaam. Mm -hmm. In our day it's it's staggering to hear of the exorbitant salaries of some preachers. We're over well over a million dollars. There's several well-known preachers that make well over a million dollars a year. A couple of them approximate two million a year, plus expenses. And it's staggering to hear about it. So a preaching, you see, it's a legitimate career. Is one. A professional training is, is available, if you want it. I'm not saying all of this training is wrong. I'm just saying this is what they offer because it's viewed as a career. Few, if any, of these high-paid professionals are actually feeding the flock of God. If there are some, they're like the exception. I wouldn't say there are none, but there's, they're the exception. Most of these men are glorified psychologists mm -hmm. trying to solve the self-diagnosed problems of the people. There are churches that are actually religious empires. They have campuses, businesses, entertainment centers, and etc. Endless. Some of our, our, our sightseeing things, you go, it's just, they're staggering just, just to see them, mm -hmm. just to see them is staggering. They ran greedily after the air dive. You were to take money out of that scenario, these churches never would have been developed. The wages of Balaam. So that's another thing, these prophets, they ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward. See, a true a true preacher or teacher or prophet mm -hmm. is seeking to bring something to the people. Yeah, amen. Yeah, that's what he's trying to do. Mm -hmm. But who's running at, greedily at the air of Balaam? They're seeking to appropriate something for themselves. Yeah, it's just the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. Maybe a name, maybe money, maybe mm -hmm. possessions, but that's what they're seeking. Mm -hmm. I've never really seen it like this before before the parallel to Balaam has been opened up a little bit more, is that these false teachers actually prey upon the weakness of the people. Exactly, exactly. But you see, well, I was considering all of these things, how, how the ministers of the church, the, the people who are on staff, 
they take advantage of the weaknesses that the people have because yes. that's their specialty when they're yeah. trained. Yeah, that's when right. you think about that's the true <laughs> ministers, the shepherds of the flock, they seek to heal and to bind oh, up and to fortify Amen. those weaknesses, not exposing them, yeah. but rather uh -huh. bringing healing. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yes, you're right. They're exploiting. They're ex exploiting the weaknesses of the people. Instead of binding up mm -hmm. the wounds, see, pouring oil and wine and binding them up, instead of doing that, they, they allow the weaknesses to continue, mm -hmm. and they make a living off of, yeah. <laughs> off, yeah. off of that condition. Yeah. She called these self-diagnosed. Mm. That is, the people are demanding. That's right. It's not. It's not all. All the teachers. The teachers are wrong, but the people are demanding well, this. They're, they're saying, "You demand. give us this." That's right. They're demanding. This is what we want. We don't want to hear anything but this because this is what we need. Mm. They're telling the teachers what they should oh, be yeah. taught. Oh yeah. Mm. Some of us have had that experience. They're heaped to themselves teachers after their own lusts, yeah. and they're willing. There's no end to what they're willing to pay these if they will just give them what they want. Mm. And if a, if the man is a lover of money, mm, yeah. see, you could yeah. then he'll he'll cave in. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a two pronged thing. Oh yes. Oh yeah. And the gainsaying of Korah. Here's another. This remember these are characteristics of these false prophets. The gainsaying of Korah. Now you may wonder why it spells C O R E here and mm -hmm. K O R A H elsewhere. But Kor, C-O-R-E, is the alter alternative transliteration of the Hebrew word Korah. So mm -hmm. in the Greek, they just change the letters, and it's, it's spelled C-O-R-E. In the Hebrew, it's the, the transliteration. You take the original letter and just convert it to a, the language letter you have. It's K-O-R-A-H, but it's the same. It's the same word. The gainsaying of Korah, or the rebellion of Korah, or by saying evil against the Lord like Korah, or the uprising of Korah, or the contradiction of Korah. They have rebelled like Korah, ruined by the same rebellion as Korah, destroyed themselves in Korah's rebellion. Korah. Those are little scriptures. This is a well-known man. He was a he was a Levite of the Kohathites, who were the tribe charged with carrying the tabernacle wherever they went. Everybody else, when they were transporting goods, were given carts, and this, but the Kohathites couldn't have carts to carry the dis disassembled tabernacle. They had to carry it on their shoulders. This was their job now. Yeah. That's, so it, Korah was a Levite, a member of the priesthood. He was discontent with his assignment, mm -hmm. so he rose up with other 250 famous, the scripture says there were famous and renowned men in the assembly. And he said to Moses, Ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Wherefore then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. We all got a right. Mm, oh yeah, this this kind of spirit this still exists. You've been, who made you ruler over us? Huh? So Moses, he didn't. He just told him. He said, "Well, our Lord will clear this up for us tomorrow. He'll make known who He's chosen tomorrow." He said, "Now all of you be there. Bring your, bring your." Censor uh -huh. and some fire and some incense with you. They all gathered together. There they were. Korah, 250 famous and renowned Levites in the assembly. And the ground clave asunder, split apart, that was under them. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up and their houses and all men that appertained to Korah and all their goods. Then there came out a fire from the Lord and consumed the 250 men that offered incense. So that cleared up. 
huh? who God had made the leader yeah. or leaders that cleared it up. They, they were too, they were too obtuse to understand an, a, an, an intellectual statement. So he just demons, he just eliminated them and that by default, Moses and Aaron, they were, left. Yeah. <laughs> they, they were left. Remember the Lord said, separate from them. Separate, that's right. <laughs> so the people that are sitting under this. That's right, separate. This is, this is something that they need to be aware of. S separate yourself from them so yeah. that you don't participate in their destruction. Be not yes. partaker of the place, yeah. Amen. Yes, that is right. He told, told the people now, they're here now, everybody back off mm -hmm. now. Yeah. yeah. He knew something's going to happen. Yeah. See, false prophets of whom... Jude speaks, we're not content with a secondary position. Remember, Jude said they despise dominion. Remember that when he said, that's what he's commenting on here. Yeah. They despise dominion. Here, Moses, he was leader over them, over all of the service. Aaron was a leader. They said, look, we're Levites. Everybody's got a right to speak. They, we're, we are Levites. Yeah. Why can't we? Why can't we participate in the leadership? They covered in power and recognition. Yeah. So they were contentious against those that were appointed of God. See, that's why Paul taught us God placed the members in the body where it had pleased him. Amen. So it's not a matter of I want to, can I? That's the, the door is open, but as if God gifted you, you can't. See, it's, yeah. <laughs> that's the difference. Amen. And then there are a variety of people who can speak. Mm -hmm. See? Preachers can speak, prophets can speak, exhorters can speak, witnesses can speak, comforters can speak. See, anybody can speak on edification, but when it comes to leadership, yeah. now you're in another category there. So the Levites, they did have a role to play. Carry the tabernacle. When we, yeah. when we moved, they had to disassemble the tabernacle, which must have been quite a, quite a task of itself. Yeah. Disassemble it. Wrap it up properly, tote it on your shoulders. If they, if they had to walk all day, they'd have towed all day. Yeah, that's right. That was a very exclusive position of itself. Yes, it was. It was a sign of God. Yeah, yes, right. it was. Nobody else, they couldn't say, Some, can anybody out there help us? Somebody out there from Isacar, come over and carry this yeah. for me. That's right. They couldn't do that. That's right. So you know that God gave them grace to do it. So every in the body of Christ, see, everybody has something. That's right. Amen. The secret is to stick with what you got. Amen. Become faithful, and He may He may say, "Come up higher." Yeah. I mean, yeah. He may He may He may come a time you're not Saul of Tarsus anymore. You you're Paul the apostle. Amen. <laughs> he started out. It was Barnabas and Saul. That's how it started out. Now before it, it was. Paul and Barnabas. Yeah. Why? Because he did what he was given yeah. given to do. Some as I have mentioned felt free to speak against Paul. See, they were they were saying much the same thing as Korah. Who, who does he think he is? He says, now, concerning you that examined me, yeah. <laughs> Try to see if he was an apostle. He worked the signs of an apostle. I mean, how much? Mm. Yeah. The sign of a teacher is the, is the growth of his students. That's right. Mm -hmm. It ought to be said at this point that none of these things had apparently been detected. <laughs> they were following the way of Cain. They were greedy, running greedily after the heir of Balaam. And they were caught up in the gainsaying of Korah. And the people where they were couldn't pick up on it. <laughs> See, that's subtlety. The one that says Satan is subtle, that's what he's talking about. You can't just look and just a cursory observation and pick out these people. It's, you've got to be a good fruit inspector. And it's time for the church to require mm -hmm. fruit. Yeah. God requires it. Yeah. It's enough of people to sit, just sit and take in, take in, take in, I suppose. I'm not sure they're taking it in, but mm -hmm. it's fruit. Yeah. 
We've been delivered from the world, been delivered from the law that we might be married to Christ, that we might bring forth fruit unto God. That's what this is all about. You say, what is the fruit? Get to work and you'll find out. It's not spilled out. It's just not... It's not spelled out in a list someplace, unless you want to talk about the fruit of the Spirit. You could start there, I suppose. So what had happened with these false teachers, they were actually robbing the people. Remember Jesus, uh, the Lord told Prophet Jeremiah that the false teachers had robbed the people of my words. I delivered these words for the people, and these false prophets took them away. See, there are, some, there are some people, some leaders, that have actually deprived the people of what God intends for them to have. I don't want to be quick to judge anybody on this. I'm just stating that case exists, and we've got to have wisdom and uh, a determination to avoid these kind of people. Of God by demanding to have something else. That's right. Yes. That's the fruit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the fruit. See, there's, there's a, an approach to preaching that capitalizes on that. Yes. They'll may, they may, at the seminary, they may add a special course <laughs> for, for what the people want. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm telling you the truth. Uh -huh. There's courses now that they didn't used to have in religious institutions. But they've been added because the people demand these now. Well, you can see the importance of this text, I'm sure. I'm, I'm very much blessed by the extent to which Jude is led to deal with this situation. He takes, you notice how he takes something that informed believers are familiar with. Cain, Balaam, Korah, and he says that this is like that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now, if you if you take away Genesis, you you can't get anything out of this. Inside the whatever message it is that they're preaching, they're they're teaching something by their demeanor also. Oh yes. And I'll just I'll just go to the last one here. Uh, the gainsaying of Korah. In another place, Paul is talking about the high priesthood of Christ, and he says, No man taketh this honor unto, unto himself. himself. Mm -hmm. I see, that they're teaching the people to disregard the headship of Christ in the Bible. Amen. Yeah, amen. amen. Because these are appointments of God where yeah. He puts us in the body. That's right. Amen. Yes, Jason. These are exa examples of the, you know, it said the Genesis 3.15, the seed of the woman. Yeah. The, this, there's this conflict, see, between God's people, God's children and Satan's Amen. children. Amen. And these, these men you've been talking about, they're examples of these are some of Satan's children. Yeah, yeah. Amen. that's right. For, uh, Cain is categorically called yeah, the child that's right. of the devil. Uh -huh. And uh, Balaam and Korah, see, they fall in that same category. Yeah. These are, these are, Children of the wicked one. Mm -hmm. well, they're tares. Yeah. Yes. They're tares. That's right. Amen. In there. Mm -hmm. And they and what they do is they oppose the the people of God. Mm -hmm. They oppose the, these false prophets. See, they're they're working for Satan. They're opposing the real prophets. That's, That's what right. they do. That's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. They they tried to oppose Paul. Yeah. They try they killed Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The yes. religious leaders are the ones that killed Jesus. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen, Brother Dave. Yeah, these uh, these false prophets have such an influence over <coughs> over a lot of people that the people themselves will turn on the one who tries to expose them. Yeah. Oh, I know. Yes. Yeah. That's I know. Mm-hmm. Brother mm -hmm. Judah. Another good example of a person <laughs> that these people went after is Judas. It li likens to Cain. Cain killed his brother over a religious matter. Judas was an apostle, one of the chosen twelve, 
in Christ's company that betrayed him and his presence it, with Jesus for those three years made the fact that he betrayed him all the more um, damnable but he was also called a, a child of the devil son and of perdition son, yeah, yeah son of perdition that's it and that's an, it's another example of what Israel is going after Another way to say what Sister June was saying, right along the same thoughts of my own, is that one thing that all of these men have example, uh, make example of, that is like Satan, is that they they presume to have a power and authority that they don't actually yeah, possess. That's right. Mm -hmm. And that is at the core of every sin. That sense to have the right to choose another way other than what God has said. Yes, yes. And a false prophet, though, leads the people in doing it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. yeah. The thought occurred to me, as you quickly reading what God has said to Jeremiah, that there are some people who cannot edify. Remember he said about the false prophets, they shall not profit this people. That's right. Yeah. So there are some people that they really, they really can't because of their emphasis and because of where they are, they can't. Mm -hmm. They can't benefit God's people. Right. Mm -hmm. We've experienced that. Yeah. Yes. yes. We've had people that have come through various meetings who have, they weren't like wicked people, but we don't think, but they, mm -hmm. yes. they just didn't have anything to say. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and some of them actually, after a while, sensed, I don't have anything to say. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Yes. And it's sad to see it. Actually. Yes, it is sad. Yes. Yeah. I'm not saying necessarily all of them were on the same level as uh -huh. what we've been talking about yeah. here, but those kind of people they need to they need to get something to say. That's Amen. right. Amen. And then they can edify. Uh -huh. right. Amen. Yeah, yeah there as I say we, we must exercise godly caution not throwing people promiscuously into this category right. but people who don't preach the truth they're they're closer to this kind of people than they are uh -huh. so they is this is that's why as soon as aquila and priscilla saw paulus division they, they got right on that immediately yeah. Yeah. They, they must have detected that he was a godly man mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. maybe brother jason maybe thought about those people who are who are comfortable in their immaturity. They, they don't want to come out of their immaturity. It's, it's too, too, uh, too hard for them. They're yeah. comfortable in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, religion is... There is a, a view of religion that makes people comfortable in it. Mm -hmm. They trust They trust in what they believed rather than who they believed. Yes. In Christ. Yeah. Yes, brother. Uh, Jude said, you know, he started out his letter. He said, "I was going to write about the common salvation, yeah. but I, I can't. I've got to say something else." Mm -hmm. And I, I've thought about this several times. Where in uh, one case where Jesus, he he gave he delivered hard words, uh, not to be mean, but because of the conditions mm -hmm. that the people. You know, he talked about eating flesh and drinking blood. And, and uh, he gave the multitudes, he talked in parables, but he didn't to the... And so there's a, a, the words given are, are given with the discretion. Uh, so they're, they're, they're fit words. So mm -hmm. it would have been wrong for Jude to write this to the church at Ephesus. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's because, right. the, because the condition didn't, didn't warrant it. Yeah. And of course you have the seven letters to the seven churches of Revelation that are, that are different. Mm -hmm. uh, because of the condition of the of the people, and I I have prayed many times for for that type of, of discernment to mm -hmm. to see where there's where there's faith you don't beat you don't beat faith up you, mm -hmm. you feed faith mm -hmm. where there's where there's hardness you, you don't comfort hardness yeah that's right, that's right. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. and there's you know there's a I, I think there's a danger of a su of, of assumption. Amen. I'm yeah. saying, well, because because they go to church, that they're 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 okay, or mm -hmm. or because of, you know whatever reason, you can make errors of assumption in all all different kinds of ways. Amen. Yeah. So you'll you'll know a, a tree uh, by its fruit, of course, 
but it's not that's not just a matter of taking a glance mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah <clears throat> all right we'll have a word of prayer our dear Heavenly Father we thank you for the book of Jude we thank you for Jude yeah. our Savior's own half-brother for his faithfulness and how I I sense that he did found no enjoyment in having to deliver this kind of word but for the people it was safe we pray that as brother Aaron has expressed it well and we 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 share this attitude with him to be discerning Amen. and never to make it more difficult for people who believe or make it easy for people who do not believe grant us this wisdom in the name of Jesus Amen.